Hello and welcome to this session. This is Professor Farhat. In this session, we would look at investment in debt securities. This topic is covered in financial accounting, the CPA exam for section, and in my intermediate accounting course. In my intermediate accounting, I covered this this session in a little bit more in depth. Actually, much more in depth. So, if you, if this session does not satisfy your need, please visit my intermediate accounting. As always, I would like to remind you to connect with me on LinkedIn if you haven't done so. YouTube is where you would need to subscribe. I have 1,700 plus accounting, auditing, finance, and tax lectures. This is a list of all my courses. If you like my lectures, please like them, share them, put them in playlist. If they benefit you, they might benefit other people. Subscribe, connect with me on Instagram. On my website, you will find additional resources such as PowerPoint slides, true, false, multiple choice. If you're studying for your CPA exam, additional resources if you're studying for your CMA, EA, or if you're trying to supplement your accounting education, I strongly suggest you check out my website. In the prior session, we looked at the classification and reporting, which is we had an intro session. If you did not look at this intro session, please check the description for the link. So classification and reporting, as we mentioned in the prior session, when we invest, we have to determine what type of investments we have. Is it debt or equity? So we have three factors. The first one to determine is whether the investment is a debt investment or an equity investment. And in this session, we will only focus on debt investments. Therefore, I'm gonna take the equity out. The second thing we have to answer, whether we are planning to hold this investment as short term or long term. And the third category is the percentage ownership in the company's equity securities. We don't have to worry about this. Why? Because we're dealing with that in this session. So in this session, we have to determine whether we plan to hold it short term or long term or guess what? In between. So let's look at debt investments. One classification for debt investments is held to maturity and we're going to define it. Another classification is trading. We're going to define it which is we're going to actively trade, which is basically short term, held to maturity, usually long term. We hold it until it mature. And if it's not trading or held to maturity, we're going to call it available for sale. Now we're going to dig deep into each of these section, each of these section, starting with held to maturity. So we skip the equity investment for this session. In the next session, we would look at the equity investments. So held to maturities, they can only have debt securities because equity securities don't mature. Equity securities, stocks don't have maturity date. Debt will have a maturity date. A bond will have a maturity date. We intend to hold it until it mature. We report it as current asset if the maturity is within one year. So it's in the last year of its life, it's going to be current. Otherwise, it's a non-current if the maturity is longer than a year. Usually, it's non-current until the last year. The portfolio of held to maturity securities reported at amortized cost. Now, what is amortized cost? If you remember when we looked at bonds, we amortized the bond, same concept. And what's important about held to maturity? No fair value adjustment. It doesn't mean we don't have to worry whether this, the bond went up or the bond went down in value. Why? Well, because we're going to be holding it until it matures. So we don't have to worry about those fluctuation because bonds do fluctuate up and down. So initially, when we buy the bond, the bond is recorded at cost. And this should be no surprise. All investments are recorded initially at cost. So let's assume on July 1st, Ling paid $30,000 to buy Dell's 7% two-year bond with a 30,000 30, par value. Well, what does that mean? It means we bought a bond for 30,000 and it has a par value of 30,000. The bond pays interest semi-annually on December 31st and June 31st. Well, we're gonna buy the bond first. We're gonna debit debt investment, which is an asset, 30,000, and we're gonna credit cash. This is on July 1st. Now what's gonna happen, the bond will pay interest. So interest revenue is recorded when earned. So after six months, we're gonna take 30,000, the par value times the stated value 7% times one half and the interest earned from July till December is $1,050. Now, well, what's the journal entry by December 31st? Well, the bond pays interest December 31st. So on December 31st, we will debit, oops, sorry. We will debit cash 1,050 and we credit interest revenue 1050 this is what we do then 
what's going to happen is this on the income statement we're going to show the interest revenue that was booked from the journal entry on december 31st and on the balance sheet we will show the debt investment at thirty thousand. this is the presentation on the balance sheet and basically every six months we'll get the revenue and at the end of the year we'll report the bond at the amortized cost then once the bond mature guess what we get our money back and how much do we get back we get the par value and how much is the par value for this bond thirty thousand. so we credit that investments and we debit cash for the bond value so this is one category the second category for bonds is trading so what does it mean it means you bought the bond but your planning is to sell it in the near future also trading is a de debt investments again when we say debt investments we are dealing with bonds those you are actively managed for profit you're trying to buy and sell on a regular basis it's always a current asset because your intent is to sell it in the near future here the portfolio is reported at fair value what does that mean it means if when they go up in value when they go down in value at the end of the period you have to report those gains those unrealized gains and where do you report them you report them in the income statement so trading securities are reported in the income statements the best way to illustrate this is to look at an example techcom portfolio of trading securities has a total cost of eleven thousand five hundred this is how much we paid for them and a fair value cost of thirteen thousand well they're worth thirteen thousand we bought them at eleven thousand five hundred what does that mean it means we have a gain so there's a difference of one thousand five hundred between the cost and the fair value what do we do well here's what we do here's what we do if there is a gain let's let's work this there's a gain what, what's going to happen is this we're going to be dealing with two account one account is called fair value adjustment and another account we're going to be calling unrealized holding gain slash loss so those are the two accounts that we use to adjust our portfolio now the portfolio here we have a gain of 1500 here are the rules that you need to know for the gains when you have a gain when you have a gain when you have a gain what's going to happen every time you have a gain it means you should have a balance debit balance to be more specific debit balance in fair value adjustment what's the fair value adjustment right here fair value adjustment do we have a gain here yes we have a gain so what does that mean it means the balance in this account should be a debit balance of 1500 now once you know the balance once you know what the fair value balance should be so it should be debit balance because we have a gain because we have an overall a gain now if we have overall a loss then the balance notice the balance not the entry the balance should be a credit balance okay the balance should be a credit balance so simply put here how do we how do we come up with a balance of 1500 well we have to work these two accounts those two accounts are involved so i need to have 1500 debit it means i'm going to have a 1500 credit unrealized holding gain now it's a holding gain although the account it's called holding gain or loss it's unrealized holding gain and we have to be very clear here this unrealized holding gain is an income statement account so this is how i adjust my portfolio so how do we show things on the financial statements when we do so so the fair value adjustment trading debit 1500 unrealized holding gain 1500 now let me switch this and make this a loss so let's assume the fair value was 10,000 what entry do we make well under those circumstances we have unrealized loss dash income 1500 fair value adjustment 1500 so it would be a loss and this will be a credit balance okay now what happened how do we present those things on the balance sheet on the balance sheet we would still have the investment at cost 11,500 then since we have a gain we add fair value adjustment 1500 then we we report that this is reported at fair value or we could report it simply at fair value by saying that investment trading at fair value 11,500 which is the cost is 11,500 fair value at 
13,000. So this is basically how um, how we account for it at the end of the period. Now, what's going to happen sometime? We are going to sell those trading securities. So assume Techcom sells trading securities that has a cost of 100 for 120 in cash. So we sold them for 120. It means we have a gain. Now this gain is, since we sold them, it's called realized, realized gain. So the gain is reported in the other revenue and gain section. So it's not with revenue. There's a section on the income statement called other revenues and other gains. It's reported there. A loss would be reported in a section called other expenses and other losses. What's the journal entry? We received cash 120, debit cash 120. Remove the investment for 100 and book the gain for 20. So this is the journal entry for the debt investment. Okay. Now, the third category is debt that's available for sale. Remember, debt available for sale, it's not held to maturity. We're not going to hold it forever. We're not going to sell it in the near future. So it's someplace in between. So it's not classified as trading or held to maturity. That's what it is. It's reported as short-term investment if it's intended to be sold within one year or the company's operating cycle or long-term if the securities do not meet the short-term criteria. Now, the company will have an idea whether they want to sell it in the near future or keep it a little bit longer. It's valued at fair value. What does that mean? It means we have to write it up. We have to write it down. Hold on a second. This sounds like trading. Well, with a minor difference. Any unrealized holding gain or loss is reported in the equity section of the balance sheet as part as comprehensive income. So the, the difference between this and the trading is the, is the unrealized holding gain or loss. And the unrealized holding gain or loss for trading securities, we booked it in income. We're going to see the unrealized holding gain or loss for the available for sale. We're going to book it in the equity section. So let's assume we had no prior investments in the current period. We acquired two available for sale securities. And at December 31st, this is what they're showing. So we have two securities, Apple bonds and in tax notes. So we paid for the bonds 73,000. The value today is 74,550. So we have a gain. Remember, if we have a gain, it means we have to have a balance of fair value balance. Remember, fair value adjustment balance of 1,550. So what does that mean? It means I need to debit my fair value because we have no prior balance, no prior balance and fair value. So simply put, fair value adjustment has a balance of zero and I need a balance of 1550. Why did I say zero? Because it says here you have no prior investment. So we don't know whether we have a, a gain or a loss from the prior year because it does make a difference whether we have a gain or a loss. And if you have a subsequent year, I suggest you check out my, well, we're going to look at subsequent year, so it doesn't matter. Or you can check out my intermediate accounting, but we're going to work with subsequent year adjustment in this, in this session. So we're going to debit fair value adjustment available for sale, 1550, credit unrealized gain, equity, 1550. So what I want you to do is to put down this T account, fair value adjustment, 1550. So this is the year of 2019. So let's take a look at year 20. And this is the presentation. This is how we're presenting on 2019. Again, the debt investments is showing at cost of 73,000. This is the fair value adjustment. This is debt at fair value, 74,550. And under the equity section, we would report the 1550 of unrealized gain. Now, the following year, we will extend the uh, example. And in year 2020, a year later, we have a portfolio of securities. Now we have a cost of 81,000 and a fair value of 82,000. You take the difference and now I have a gain of 1,000. Okay, I still have a gain but at 1,000. Now, remember what I did. I told you keep track of fair value adjustment. If you remember fair value adjustment was 1550 from the prior year. This is 2019. Now, the fair value adjustment is supposed to be 1,000. Why? Because my gain is 1,000. So now I need to make an adjustment. What adjustment do I need to make? Well, I need to credit fair value of 1550. So this is the adjustment. Okay? Now, to credit fair value, you remember, remember the corresponding entry goes to unrealized holding gain slash loss equity. And remember, in that account, I had 1550. Let me put it in red first. I had 1550 balance. I'm sorry. Uh, 
I had uh, yes, I had fifteen fifty credit balance. The this is the unrealized gain fifteen fifty credit balanced from the prior year fifteen fifty. Now what I do is since I credited this account, I am going to debit debit fifteen fifty. The difference between them now is a thousand. Notice I have a thousand in both. Now my unrealized gain is a thousand. My fair value adjustment a debit a thousand, which makes sense because I have a gain of a thousand. My balance should be a thousand. Okay, I'm gonna take this one more year. Just kind of make sure we're, we can do this one more year. So let's assume in year 2021. So we're done with 2020. I just made the adjustment, and now the balance is a thousand and a thousand. And here's what you're looking at. In these examples, what's helpful is to use the this timeline zero. So in 2019, we were at 1550. Then this is this is was in 2019. In 2020, we went down to 1000. So we reduce our gain by 550. Now in 2021, in 2021, here we go. I have a portfolio with the cost of a million and fair value, fair value of 900. 99,000 okay so if I, I paid for now my new portfolio has a cost of a million and fair value of 999,000 I have a loss of 1,000 that's what I have I have a loss of 1,000 well if I have a loss of 1,000 what does that mean it means I'm moving from oh I had a gain of a thousand so I'm moving from a, a gain of a thousand this is zero to a loss negative 1000 so i'm moving 2000 unit to the left it means in my fair value it means in my fair value i'm supposed to have a balance of 2000 because remember if it's a loss i have to have a balance well to have a i'm sorry balance of a thousand i apologize balance of a thousand well to have a balance of a thousand i have to credit this account 2000 well for every credit i need Yes, for every credit, because I need 2,000 to eliminate the 1,000 and keep 1,000. For every credit, I need a debit. Sorry, for every credit, I need a debit. So, I'm sorry, this, I mean, sorry, this was a mistake. I made a mistake. This 1,000 is supposed to be on this end from the prior year. So, sorry, maybe you already kind of noticed that. Uh, so, this 1,000 on this end. So, now I need to credit this account 2,000. And now I have a balance of 1,000. This is a debit. A debit means a loss. And a thousand credit and fair value means a loss. So in 2021, I am reporting a loss. Now, 2022, you would look at your portfolio, determine whether you have a loss. You might move a little bit further down. You might move backward, depending on whether you have a loss or a gain. So this is how you adjust your portfolio. So for year 2020, notice you had the fair value adjustment of 1550. But you needed a thousand because the loss was a thousand, so you needed to credit it five hundred and fifty. Then, for year uh, for the same year, you credited, uh, you debited unrealized gain to make it a balance. Now let me go a step further. What I did re redo this one more time because I may you know kind of I don't want to confuse you. Remember in 2021, 2021, we said assume a loss of a thousand. A loss of a thousand means I'm I, I'm supposed to have a credit of a thousand in fair value. To have a credit of a thousand, I need to credit this account two thousand, and for every credit, I need to debit. This is two thousand, so this is a thousand loss. It becomes unrealized loss, and now this is good credit balance and fair value means I have a loss of a thousand. In the next session, we would look at investment and equity securities. And although if you had any problem with the fair value adjustment, fair value adjustment, don't worry. We're going to look at the fair value adjustment again when we look at equity securities, just in case you're like, I'm not really sure, or you can go to my intermediate accounting. As always, please like the recording, share it. And if you're interested in additional material, please visit my website, especially if you're studying for your CPA exam and you want to get those extra five to 10, seven or 15 points. I can help you with that. Good luck, study hard and stay safe.